It's another week, another technical cheat sheet video. Hello everyone, Monty here, market analyst at IG, where we take a look at key technical indicators of a specific market in order to help us formulate an overview, which for this one, quite tricky at times. And that means that even though you wanna prep the strategies for when that overview holds, you definitely gotta be ready for when it might fail. So we're gonna take a look at levels so you can plug and chug on both daily and weekly timeframes, as well as where traders stand. This one on the same side, but how they got there vastly differs. We're gonna take a look at what the difference is in between COT speculators, how they've been trading it versus IG clients, as well as fundamental considerations in a week where, let's just say it's going to be probably more about US data than it is out of the UK. Let's go and get started. GUP USD, not much to say on the weekly time frame because let's just say it's been quite consolatory as of late. There was that brief breakout. You thought that it was going to, it was going to happen. No, it didn't. It sh did shift things significantly on the daily time frame, even resulted in an overview shift at the time. I will get to that when we zoom into the daily time frame. But for now, for the weekly price beneath its uh, main short-term weekly moving average is not really of much significance because that's the most at-risk technical bond. Box, uh, neutral when it comes to most of its technical boxes. I actually plotted uh, the DMI as well as the ADX down here. You can see that not much of a margin for the plus DI over the negative DI and ADX that's been falling you know, out of training territory and dropping an RSI nowhere near overbought or oversold territory as well as price well within the Bollinger Bass. So you look at this and you want to think to yourself, okay, you know what? This is an overview that's relatively consolidatory. Okay, fine. The dust has settled quite a bit after, what we, after we had those central bank decisions. And I know a large part of it at times has been the dollar dictating the FX moves, but here's the thing. There are, you know, you do have those guys in the camp where they're thinking to themselves, okay, you know what, second quarter, this is finally, it's been a year and a half, we've been anticipating those dollar bears, we've been anticipating a fall when it comes to the dollar, this is it, we're finally going to get that. The problem is, is that even if you are anticipating a decline, and I'm not saying that's the way you want to trade it, at the end of the day, uh, the overview is not where it's headed, it's, you're taking a snapshot of where it is right now, and then you sort of set up the strategies accordingly. But for those that are anticipating a decline, you're probably not want to, going to want to look at the weekly time frame. You actually want to look at the daily time frame. Usually, it's if you look at the key indices like S and P five hundred when you did it for for uh, uh, Nasdaq one hundred, for example, it was the daily time frame that was borrowing the bull average overview off the weekly because it was the weekly that stayed intact, whereas technical boxes were sort of shifting quite a bit in the day daily time frame as they usually do in the shorter term. But in this case, you can't actually borrow from the weekly time frame because the weekly is going to be the last one to shift because it's a longer term time frame. If you're waiting for a shift in the overview, you actually want to look at the daily time frame. We'll get to that when we zoom into the daily time frame. But for now, when it comes to the strategies on the weekly time frame, ongoing caution for those going against any trend move from these averages. And that means that you know you're you're talking about selling the first resistance after a significant reversal. So if it reaches, you're waiting for it to breach well, significantly, only when it's coming back down do you then consider going for a sell strategy. Same thing when it's, you know, only after, after it breaks beneath the first support significantly and then it comes back up. And uh, for those going uh, contrarian, saying that, you know what, eventually there's going to be a, a break or I'm eventually anticipating this, 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 this not to be the case when it comes to its overview, you're going for a buy breakout off the weekly first resistance or a sell breakout off the weekly first support. Now, there are those that because you're not anticipating a break beyond these levels, there is the matter of, okay, can I initiate early? But remember, you're, in this case, if you're doing this because you're going for a long-term trend, uh, that means that you're not, you, you can't go for a small profit taking because that means your risk reward is going to be way off. In that case, you're essentially going to have to be ready for a trend move. And that means you also got to be ready for initial disappointment because if it doesn't happen, you're going to constantly get stopped out. You know, if it goes up and then it comes back down, you get stopped out there, you get stopped out one after the other until finally that eventual break happens. What about when it comes to RSP uh, to first levels on the weekly time frame? 107 uh, ticks, whereas when it comes to the first to the SL, whether it's the uh, first resistance to the stop loss, SL stands for stop loss, by the way, or the first support to stop loss, you're looking at 54 points. Again, at your discretion, obviously within your risk reward ratio. I want to keep in mind also that when it comes to the weekly time frame, it's held this cautious consolidation for quite some time. So even when we had that move higher in the daily time frame, it shifted things on the daily. The weekly remained anchored because it takes a lot more time. So this is something you just want to keep in mind. It's not a bad idea that even if you're anticipating an eventual break, uh, you know, look at look to the weekly as sort of an anchor, unless you think that no, I I, I think that the move is gonna is gonna happen, and that means I'm going to actually look to the daily time frame, even if I'm going to be disappointed at times if the move doesn't happen just yet, like we saw a couple. Couple weeks back, although there were fundamental factors to, be, to consider back then, uh, to, uh, to be fair. But that's essentially what the narrative is going to be. Let's go ahead and zoom into daily time from actually identical technical boxes, but that's just because of where things stand right now. When price actually moved up over here, when it was walking uh, uh, the upper end of the band, ADX briefly went into trending territory, positive DMI, RSI was in overbought territory, price was above all its main short and, uh, and long-term daily moving averages. So it was able to, to really shift it, the narrative, and really make it look like this is it, this is the bullish move, only for it to disappoint. It isn't the first time we've, we've seen it happen when it comes to the pound. 
probably won't be the last time, but that just means that in the meantime, even though the overview, looking at the technical boxes and how it's come back down, it's still a cautious one. Let's not forget, there's going to be there's a lot of mayhem when it comes to technical boxes, and you're not going to be able to, as I mentioned, rely on the weekly. As if you are looking for a breakout, it's here where it's going to set the tone first and quickly, even if it ends up ends up resulting in initial or secondary disappointment. So for now, the usual strategies are going to hold for both conformance and contrarian strategies. Um, that means, you know, conformance are, are sell after significant or buy after significant reversals off the first levels, whereas with contrarians, you're going for breakouts. And then here's the thing. On a weekly time frame, you know, on average, conformance have generally done better just because it's come back towards an average and, and it's been relatively uh, range-bound and consolidatory. So working within that has been a lot better. On a daily time frame, you know, when does that break occur? Does it happen today? Does it happen tomorrow? Does it happen after a week or after two weeks? On average, within the overview, before it shifts, you might be in a situation where conformists might actually outperform against contrarians. I'm not talking about days where we've got significant fundamental data. I'll get to that with fundamental considerations. But that's also something you have to note. So if you're going for, for a breakout, you're going for something very large, and you need to weigh up the the, the not just the stop loss and, and take profit within that specific trade, but you need to factor in all the losses that are hit prior to that breakout as well, because you want to try and make up for that. And that means you're ideally going for something quite large. And maybe even if you're not, if you're going for something very big, then you're going for something beyond on a daily time frame, beyond the first resistance and the first support. So initiating the breakouts later and not sooner. I know within that day, you're going to struggle because it's difficult to get significant fall through within a certain, within a single session. But that's essentially, if you're thinking very long-term and for a much, much larger breakout, what about RSP to, to uh, first uh, uh, distance? I'm doing this. This is for Monday, RSP at 126.24. You can change the relative starting point depending on when you're watching this, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But here's the thing. If you're watching on, say, Friday with non-farm payrolls, you want to go ahead and adjust either one of two things you got to do. Adjust the gap from the RSP to the first because it's not going to be 40. You're going to probably get a move much, much larger than that. And of course, that means if you're tweaking your risk reward, the first to SL isn't going to be 19, but larger than that. The second thing you could do is you go, you're, okay, I'll stick with these numbers. But that means that on days where things are going to be a lot calmer, you can think to yourself, okay, maybe I can go for a fade or a light reversal there. But on days where you have something significant, whether out of the US or out of the UK, then you're going to have to stick with a very, very, very significant reversal. So you cannot just initiate with a fade. You're going to get stopped out very quickly, especially if you if you narrow these levels at a time when market makers themselves are going to be withdrawing liquidity whenever there's a fundamental event, like, as a good example, US non-farm payrolls. Let's go ahead and take a look at sentiment traders, both of them, uh, uh, IG clients, clients on our end, as well as COT speculator, uh, majority buy, though in the case of COT speculators, reducing their uh, longs, increasing their shorts, taking it out of heavy buy territory from 67 to 62%. It's not just here. Even in the euro, they reduced their majority buy buy. So they're actually not far off shifting in the euro from majority buy to majority sell. And when it comes to IG clients, from heavy uh, buy 66 to 60%. So not, not far off uh, in terms of where both of them stand, but where they, how they got there vastly differs. I'm going to go and plot it onto the chart. You got the 50 50 red line, the dotted lines you're looking at the left side as percent long. Whenever you see the blue or green dotted line below the red line, it means they're majority short. Whenever they're above, they're majority buy. So up here, if it gets to around 70%, then heavy buy 70%. Whereas when it comes down to over here, the green dotted line, tracking it down to around 37%, that means they're minority buy 37, which means their majority sell 63%. Let's go ahead and start with IG, uh, with uh, COT speculators, green dotted line. You can see that it really was large chunk of them going with the flow. It's a momentum trade. You know, they, they, they started to raise their buy buys as price was going up. When price started to come down, they held initially and then they go, okay, you know what? We're out of here. And you saw that you saw them reduce their, their, their uh, buy buys and shift to majority short as prices went down, going with them up very, very much momentum base. You saw prices start to recover and start to move up. You see them Finally, a little bit late, a little bit of a lag, but finally start to take it up a little bit. And then over here, you know, they, they once again, there was a bit of a divergence. Price was moving, trending a little bit lower. They were holding on and actually raising their buy buys. They had this move higher FOMC, and afterwards they took it down. And now they're, uh, as I mentioned, reducing and getting out of heavy buy territory and coming down to about 62%. What about IG clients? They actually traded this one a little bit better. Going opposite, and because it averaged back, they actually managed to get this one right. So if you see prices going up, over here, blue dotted line comes all the way down, uh, not far off extreme uh, uh, sell territory, and price comes down. Shorts get out, longs initiate, they shift back to majority buy. It comes all the way down to here. They go up into heavy buy territory, not far off the extreme buy territory. And then once again, price comes up, Longs get out, shorts, short, uh, longs get out, shorts initiate, and then afterwards they go back and all of a sudden very close to the middle. Try, when when price, things were range bound, they were also 
trying to range trade quite a bit. It's only over here where you had the, the, the move. Uh, again, this is on a weekly time frame. The pop higher, that shifted a lot of uh, technicals, but they actually went they actually went to the to the sell side, took it into majority short territory, and it proved right for them. And for now, taking it into majority buy territory. I'm going to zoom into the daily time frame just so you, so you can see the, the latest move for IG clients. This is where you had that move where it shifted. You know, it was just enough to shift all the technicals boxes green. You know, just enough to give us that overview shift, and then wham, it just came back and, and it got undone. And and traders managed to clients on our end managed to 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 get that run right in the sense that shorts got out, long started to initiate. I think this right here. This whack right here, you had the FOMC and then you had the SMB surprise cut, which European currencies generally dropped. Then you had the, the Bank of England as well, that tweak. And, and they had this drop here to this new zone. I think this is kind of what surprised them. Took them up into heavy buy territory briefly and somewhat very light, but trying to work their way out of it, not really trying to overcommit thereafter. So what about fundamental considerations for this week? Look, for, when it comes to the dollar, depending on when you're watching this, you got the PMIs, manufacturing on Monday, services on Wednesday, but pretty much about labor data leading up to Friday's non-farm payrolls. You do have some FOMC members speaking, including the Fed's pal. And speaking of, of, of the FOMC, you got the market pricing courtesy of LSEG uh, by a majority, not a significant one, anticipating the first cut in June. That's as of doing this video. Um, not going to take much to tilt that narrative to go to a coin toss or even push out the first rate cut, and not going to take much to change the narrative as well of markets pricing in by majority, not a very, very big one, that there are going to be three rate cuts this year. What about from the, comes uh, to, the, to the pounder out of the UK? you got holiday on Monday, PMIs, money and lending, housing price data, and uh, for the Bank of England, not far off. Again, as of doing this video, market pricing is always going to be changing, but a coin toss in terms of getting a rate cut in June, and also also not going to take much to tilt the narrative in terms of having three rate cuts this year out of the Bank of England. So that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. Do hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.